What is up guys? Welcome to the Computer Information Highway for your Java programming tutorial number 33. And in this program, uh, we're going to be continuing where we left off uh, with our decrypt function, which was nothing. We hadn't actually started it. Uh, but we're going to be starting it in this one. Uh, and if you remember last time, we created this reverse mod function so that uh, we could, given one of our values and a remainder, uh, figure out what our number was and our divisor, of course. And if you needed more information on how we did that, we did a video on it right before this one that explained just how the modulus worked and how we could reverse it. Um, so you can go ahead and check that out uh, if you haven't already seen it. Uh, and if you have, you should know where we left off. And as I was saying, I think at the end of our last video, our decrypt function is going to be very, very similar to our encryption function. Um, one of the only differences between decrypting and encrypting this is the order of our shift. So if we have our ciphertext, rather than going from our plain text, shifting it to our initial vector, and then shifting it again to our ciphertext, uh, we're going to be taking our ciphertext, shifting it with our key, or yeah, we're, we're still going to be, sh so we're going to be shifting it using our reverse mod function with our key and then taking what we get out of that and reverse modding that as well in order to get uh, and reverse modding it with our initial vector in order to get our plain text. And then we could use and if we were to go on to the let's say the next iteration so if our key was if our cipher text was say four characters long um, we would use the the ciphertext here as our initial vector for our reverse mod for the second time around. And you'll see what I do whenever I do the uh, the decryption because it's kind of, uh, it might not be easy to see it on paper here, but understanding what I do whenever I code it, I'll uh, be able like to explain it a little bit better. And that's so um, that we could pass it into itself so and use uh, and I say coding, but what I'm actually going to be doing is to solve our encryption. Copying and pasting this in here. Because let's be honest, there's no reason to redo all of a code that we did before. Um, so we're also going to change this to a string. So we can use recursion to solve our encryption. Um, and I'm just going to change a couple of the things. Key is going to stay here real stay quick, the same. so it makes it a little bit and easier to see. And our initial vector and I'm is also going to stay the same. same and follow through. Um, P key. So I'm going to change this first. So I'm going to I think this to in order for this one to work, we actually need to uh, reverse the direction of this. Uh, I so want to be able to know that this is a cipher text, not by a plain changing text it value. this way. So if we set uh, P, we're actually vector, going to create we want a, the uh, we want it to be the greater plain text of the value, two. and this is so that uh, we have our decrypted function or our decrypted string back into a plain text form that we're going to return at the end. Um, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, take out our change to initial vector. We're not going to be using mini uh, initial vector quite the same we that we did before. PI vector. Um, okay. And so going through our for loop, uh, this is going to be the situation that we had uh, here. And this is going to be oh, wait, really the biggest thing that wrong. changes. So I need and to all that's going to happen is we're just going to be re reversing our uh, cipher integers in our p key, our and then arbitrary, we're going to be doing uh, the reverse mod that I'm going to hold the reverse mod of with what our we cipher, create for or with our shifted. Just so I can value. keep it all on the screen and um, nothing goes off. Uh, so let's just call this. So we can do that pretty simply. Uh, and this I'm is going to be change this to. Uh, our not c int but uh, vector. Uh, so this is going to be the initial vector that we put in, int. reversed this with the c based on or our the IV vector. integer that um, we got out of here. Fuck. Right. And then and so leaving off after that, whatever. I'll deal with that in a second. And we're not going to be doing this. I'm going to copy and paste afterwards so you can just see what I'm doing. Um, so we created our rev mod function. So we're going to be reversing 26 because we're going to be just doing the 26 characters uh, in our alphabet. We're 
we're going to be reversing it with our a value uh, being our p key. And you need to remember we need to subtract 10 from that. And then we our second or our third is going to be get numeric value. And since this is the situation where p text or x is greater than our p text, we need to just set this to uh, x because we know it's going to be an x. And with this situation, we're going to copy and paste this because this is going to be our new uh, shift. This is the first shift that we perform, except in this situation, we're going to be performing our, uh, uh, we're going to be doing our reverse mod using our vector and our initial vector. So what we need to do next is I need to take out this initial vector because we're not going to be working with initial vector. Uh, we had our IV ints and our C text. Our C text changed, so we need to make sure we actually switch that over to C text. And uh, so our next our next endeavor is going to fix this is going to be to fix this one. Sorry. Uh, and basically, this is going to be our C text. This is going to be our cipher because we're reversing our cipher text. Right. And now I'm going to create an integer uh, and this is just going to hold the reverse mod function that we do here. And this is going to be uh, similar to this reverse uh, to this mod function that we did here. We're just going to be reversing it again except this time we're going to be using our vector in our text. So we can do uh, rev mod uh, 20, uh, 26 character dot get numeric value pi vector of x minus 10 and our third condition is just going to be our iv ints plus 10 um, so these are the two, this is, these are really the two shifts that happened before. This is going to be the shift between our key and our text first, and then it's going to be the tech, uh, the shift between our vector and our, uh, shifted value second. And that's how it will get it back to the, uh, state that it was in to begin with. Um, and in order to finish this up, oh, I'm sorry. So I need to set P text, uh, plus equals C text of, or I'm sorry, equals character dot four digit, digit character dot max rate x. All right, because that'll put it into a character form that we need. That's why we also did the plus 10 at the end here. It was just to balance it out. Um, so, the next thing is, I think, so, okay, so instead of initial vector, since we're going to be trying to return our uh, decrypted string, our, uh, the string after we have done all of our shifts to it, we need to actually set this to uh, ptext, because ptext is going to be the uh, second, it's going to be right after the second shift, it's going to be the combination of all the characters in the second shift, or this, in the sh after all the shifts have been performed. <clears throat> So we're also going to set this one to ptext. And then our text is not going to be the same. We're not going to be using the same cipher. We, you see, like we took this string and we put in the substring. So our text is going to be smaller. Uh, so it will know when to stop. But our initial vector is actually not going to be uh, the same as what we started. So in this situation, our initial vector was bc. But the initial vector for the... I'm going to see if I can scroll up. But the initial vector uh, for the second one was RW, and or the initial vector for the second set ended up being our KN, because our KN ended up becoming our initial vector that we ended up needing to put in in order to encrypt the second set of it. So we need to be we need to make initial vector turn into our first the first 
the first section of our C text or the first section of our text. So let's call this uh, Tempe and see this is going to be our temporary encryption information. And in here, we're going to set temp enc plus equals to. And since we're going to be using uh, our text or our C text in this case, we can do a C text of X. And if you're asking why C text wouldn't go out of bounds, it's because the input that we get in this text, if you go up here, the encryption ends up giving you something that is uh, equal to a multiple of the base of the B size or yeah the B size that we have um, because it ends up adding that extra character that extra dummy character so we know that the text size is always going to be a multiple of our key um, so we know that doing C text of X is never going to run outside of the bounds uh, and I think that should work if we run oh we got to and create our decryption and I'm just going to do decrypt of encryption key initial vector and we run this uh, that's not right oh so we just need to add minus 10 here minus 10 here and let's run that again and see what happens. So we get our CD. So you see that our uh, original test case is working. Um, let's go ahead and see if we could test it with a couple of others. Let's do A, B. And that is incorrect. So we also need to tap, uh, pass in our temp ENC as our next initial vector. Uh, sorry. And it's still wrong. Why is it still wrong? Uh, okay. Wow. So I did. I was not consistent. Whenever I put everything over initially, um, I should have went ahead and changed this to our decrypt because I was trying to feed in our encryption, which was definitely wrong. So let's see. C D A B. Congratulations. That is our text that we started off with. And let's go ahead and try this with some uh, varying sizes of our key. So we still get our CDAB in here. Uh, we can go ahead and test that one out, and we still get our CDAB. The X is obviously the uh, the dummy character that we get since our hitas that our random string of characters that I typed in came out to uh, gave us. And if we were to even increase that further, you see we get uh, more X's because it's just filling it in every time. Uh, I actually think it was calling it off of this one because it was the smaller case because of our B size. But if you guys made it this far and managed to stick through all of my babbling and mumbling and trying to figure out how to get through all this, uh, then good job. If you actually got this to work for yourself, um, fantastic. I'm going to copy and paste the code somewhere at some point. Uh, I am working on something else to, to go along with all these videos that I'm putting up. So just stay tuned in our next video we'll probably be starting no we probably won't start a project uh i have no idea what's gonna happen for the next video so we're just gonna figure it out so i'll see you guys next time